Hi guys, I'm Mike Schneider of Variety and IndieWire and KCRW, and welcome to the celebration of GAME and the, the 30th year of CBS Daytime being number one. And we've got a fantastic panel for you, so I'm going to introduce to them right now to you. First up, he spent 30 years in a, as an executive producer on all sorts of different shows, live specials, series. He co-created the other half, and now he's the executive producer of Let's Make a Deal, Dan Funk. Next up, you know him from the Wayne Brady Show, from Him Yim, from Girlfriends, from Whose Line Is It Anyway, and he is the host of Let's Make a Deal, TV's big dealer, Mr. Wayne Brady. <laughs> Sir? Can I this back there? Up next, you know him from, of course, okay. the Drew Carey Show, and also from Whose Line Is It Anyway, and he is the host of The Price is Right. Come on down, Drew Carey. <laughs> Sir. How you doing? Hi, everybody. And ah. finally, you've seen him on TV as a host, shows like Beauty and the Geek, and he's also the executive producer of both The Price is Right and Let's Make a Deal. <laughs> Whatever. Mr. Mike Richards. Yeah. Hey, Wayne. What's up, buddy? Sir? Hi. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. So first off, I feel like off, we're sitting in the theater of a really rich guy's house. <laughs> Drew, we this are, is like yours. Are. Really? We are. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's actually Leslie nice Moonves's house. I would guess. <laughs> so yeah. that yeah. transport welcome. worked. Welcome. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so let's start off by the the news of the week. Uh, kind of coincidental that we're doing this panel this week because you know there's always something going on in these shows. But this week, for the first time since 2003, uh, you had three people at the same time hit a dollar oh, and yeah. make it to the showcase yeah. showdown. Yeah, that was exciting. Yeah. Well, we did th the, the the actual occurrence was like a couple months ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. We just happened to air it. Right, but it aired this <laughs> week, so. The spoiler's out now. It happened. Um, but, but, you know, I guess when you do as many episodes as you guys do, weird things like that have, happen every once in a while. Every day. Like, people ask me, like, what's your favorite thing? Any, I, believe it or not, did anybody ask you this? What, any, any crazy things ever happen on the show? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, every stupid day or something crazy happens on the show. You so, know, the yeah. first person to tell me that that show had aired that day was Wayne Brady. Called me. Yeah. Well, well, I called him mocking him. Yeah, he was making fun of me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how hey, so? Hey, man, how are you doing? You okay? Is the government still running? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I read it on Facebook. He's like, oh my God, it's three dollars. Oh, Mike, is the world all right? Is everything good? And, um, and uh, yes, he was okay. Yeah. You were okay. Right. He was was okay. Well, what, uh, when, when fun well, things like that happen, what, what's it like on stage or in the control room? Do you guys realize, oh, this is... Everybody's super excited, and we were all just like laughing about it, and hey, that was great. But think of it as if you, if you were at a, I don't know, if you were in Vegas, and you were at the roulette table, and you were a roulette dealer, you would see like the same stuff, and you would see crazy stuff, like you would see maybe three, you know, 20s in a row, you know, somebody hitting a really weird win streak where they win a million dollars or lose a million dollars. It, it goes streaking unusual. through yeah. the casino. Yeah, but I mean, weird things happen, but it, the weird thing happening isn't weird. Make right. sense? So, because weird things happen all the time. So, something right. like that, as unusual as it was and as fun as it was, like there's all kinds of fun things. You that expect on the, show. the unexpected. Yeah, basically. exactly. Well, and we start to panic. We're like, okay, does anyone know how many times this has happened? Because we, on, on Deal, because we have done it since the beginning yeah. of the reboot, we now meticulously track everything. Mm -hmm. But when they started Prices Right in 1972, there wasn't like, oh, this will be a legendary format that will live on forever. Yeah. So, we don't have much of the data, we get asked how much we've given away. or has it, So the first thing we do, it's like, OK, I know that's yeah. happened. Has, how many times? Does anyone know? Oh, God. So there was no yeah. room somewhere at the studio where, oh, I hold the <laughs> All the shows are on uh, the little book. Microfiche. All the shows are on like, oh, a film. Yeah, microfiche. <laughs> well, like a library. And, if you've, away, and yeah. if you've been to CBS Television City, it's, I believe there are rooms that, oh. that people have been living there probably for decades that no one knows. So that's very possible. I had a crow come this morning with the results. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner. A raven, <laughs> sorry, a raven came. Well, uh, the, Pro, so the, Raven, whatever. The, the show, the show is celebrating 45th, 45 years. So you guys are getting close to 50, which I'm sure will be a big deal just five years from now, which will be here before you know it. Um, I'll be dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but both. 
But Drew, you're, you're already celebrating 10 years. Yeah, it's my 10th year doing The Price is Right. Wow. Um, I, first off, talk about that. I mean, can you believe that you've now been hosting The Price is Right for 10 years? And what has that meant for you and your career and, and um, for just your, for, for Drew Carey? I don't know, it's weird. I'm one of these people, I know it's going to sound crazy, but uh, I'm one of these, I don't, I, as soon as something's done, I forget about it. Like, I don't hang on to things that much. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any, I don't have much Drew Carey memorabilia around my house, anything like that. I have a picture of me and Johnny Carson in my office, and that's about it. Like, he's been over my house plenty of times. I've really, like, no articles, no me shaking hands with famous people, none of that stuff. Um, as soon as I do something, I go, that was cool, and I left. I was just telling Wayne before the show, for example, uh, <laughs> Of, and this is something that some, any of you would live off of the rest of your life. It was a few, quite a few years ago. We were at a karaoke place, and uh, um, some guy came up to me and said, hey, you were here last year with Wayne Brady. And I went, really? And he said, yeah. You guys got up on stage, and you sang Ebony and Ivory. Do you remember that? <laughs> and uh, I was with our friend uh, Jeff Davis, who's also on, who's on Is It Anyway? And I go, Jeff, was I here with Wayne last year? And uh, did I, were we sang Ebony and Ivory? And he goes, yeah, you sure did. And I thought to myself, I've just done too many cool things in my life. <laughs> but that's like, remember fell it. out of the bucket. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah anybody, uh, like a normal person would have been, oh my God, did I ever tell you? Yeah, you told us. <laughs> Bad, or honestly, I think you need an MRI. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's just like, so many things happen, and I'm just like, it's almost like another day. It's, I hate to even say it, but it's like another day of cool things. You it's know? another day in awesome town. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, honestly. <laughs> It's it's my, my life is really like amazing and fun, and uh, being, doing the show is like the biggest blessing in the world. And uh, like I, I feel like everything in my life's prepared me to be You're the host half of the leprechaun. Show. You are yeah. one of the most fortunate dudes. I really am, right? You really, <laughs> you, yeah. But I mean, like when people win like even a little bit of money on Price is Right, I, I've been I was broke all the way up until I was in my 30s, so I know what it's like to win like you know a, some woman won a Chevy Cruze, like big deal, but it was a free car. You know, you win a refrigerator, it's a free refrigerator. You win $2,000, that's not really big game show money, but if I would have won $2,000 back in the day, I would have never shut up about it the whole year. <laughs> so I know what that's like, and I, you know, like the improv stuff that Wayne and the guys helped teach me, because I really learned from these guys, like helped me be calm in front of a crowd and talk to the audience, and all my stand-up experience helped me out. Like, everything's helped me out being the host of the show. It's, it's almost like I've been prepared to do this, so it's kind of like, uh, it's been great, honestly. Did you think that you would go, when you started, because I've watched that tape the first moment, oh, yeah, I know. Know, it's gonna be, okay. Um, <laughs> did you think you would do it? Ten, did you envision 10 years? What did you think? Uh, well, to be honest, when I first started, I don't know if I'd be a lot, like I was in such bad health and stuff, I didn't know if I was gonna last that long. It's one of the reasons I try to change my diet and lose weight and everything. Well, the thing is, yeah, we, we watched you get really healthy uh, while hosting the show. Did, did, uh, was, was there any sort of, you know... I'm no James, but I'm like... <laughs> model. No model. That dude. <laughs> did you tell people he had sores on his body? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I tried to find a way to make fun of him. So uh, <laughs> George and I always make fun of him. So today he's with his shirt off and all the women are squealing and I go, how about I hand for a makeup department? Uh, <laughs> His body is covered in sores. You can't even tell. Yeah, it's good makeup. They have to shave his back every day. <laughs> it's all prosthetics. The other day I said, uh, I said it's a corset and a, zip and, a, and a skin suit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> can't even see the zipper. Let's look at our makeup department. Up. I talked to you this summer for a story I did about how comedians now, it's, uh, they've taken over game shows. Um, but you said back when you started in 2009, it still wasn't really that cool. And you were kind of concerned that you were, you know, it was kind of the world of, of local, uh, you know, affiliate weathermen. Uh, absolutely. And that's exactly. All due respect to Pat Sajak. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because there's, there's a stigma. And, and I mean, I think I'm a little, in, we all see ourselves in different ways. I think that I'm different than a lot of the guys that, that, well, our crop is different because game show hosts, when I was growing up, it's, you had Monty and, and of course you had Bob Barker and it, it was a very specific job almost and it seemed like there was a very specific way of speaking and, and just like a weatherman, this is the way that I'm gonna be or just like a radio host, I'm gonna talk like this, I'm gonna make this thing, I'm gonna, and that's a little off-putting to me because I just thought, well, why not just be, be real be accessible, be funny, 
If you feel like saying something, do that, break out the rigidity of whatever that form or that norm is. So when I was approached about doing the show, I said no. He can attest to it because- I said no too. Yep. <laughs> hell no. Because you're not gonna, because I'm trying exactly He did actually say hell no. I, I hell said no. hell no, because I'm doing sitcoms, and I'm, yeah. and, and I'm a theater true. nerd, I do theater, and I'm a singer, and, and, I, and I do all this other stuff. So <laughs> that's what's cool about what we do now, is this team yeah. and the Fremantle shows, and, and why I'm glad that we have our chunk of the CBS daytime number one dynasty is, we aren't that. We are two shows that are well-loved game shows, but we put love and fun into the game world, so you can laugh at it, you can, it's human. So when those people get the one dollar, you're not just cheering, you're, oh, God bless America. It's a human thing, it's fun. So that's why I love doing it now, because it just isn't a, how you doing, Jimmy? It isn't that thing. Well, it, it, his name is Jonathan, actually. No, uh, Jimmy. It's Jimmy, Jonathan. <laughs> Well, it plays to your strengths as as improv guys. You know, the the fact that you can play off these these uh, you know contestants and, and have a lot of fun. I mean, Wayne, you have so much fun on the show, and famously, you guys. Glad you think so. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> uh, but but uh, first off, talk about how you guys changed your minds. Like, what convinced you to actually do this? <laughs> oh, are you talking to him or me? Oh, I said yes. Oh, you, right. <laughs> But, but no, you and Drew, like how you guys said, well, you, you said no for I a long time. The first so. call I got, I'd been, I was retired and I was kind of like traveling around and then um, uh, I got asked to do this show, The Power of Ten, which is a show that was on CBS at nighttime and I did the pi pilot of it and because uh, it was only going to be part time on the, you know, one weekend a month I was going to go out and film, it was really easy and uh, I really like Michael Davies, the producer that was going to do it. So, the uh, Power of Ten. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Christian boy band. <laughs> <laughs> but he is with us, the power of ten. Hallelujah. <laughs> CBS. <laughs> that, I'm actually, that was the theme song. I'm actually going to sell this that. Be just a right That's a really <laughs> good. Yeah. That's a really good, good idea, idea, actually. They're on Christian after boy us, band, yeah. by the way. They're back. And, and Wayne, what was the Power of Ten about? What was? Oh, I, it was about. No, no, I want to hear Wayne. Oh, so, uh, yeah. oh the, power the Power was, of Ten was about. It was about um, a mystic ruin, <laughs> rune that drew ten different kids all across the U.S. together to form the biblical uh, uh, B-box sensations known as the Power of Ten. And they tore across the it's U.S. Like up solving people, crime. It's like it's like up of people solving only crime. with Jesus and solving crime. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because they come to your town and they sing, he uh, is the true one, he beep, 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 beep. hallelujah, and then they go up to their spaceships, <laughs> called the Ascendant One. <laughs> very and, specific. And how did it go, Drew? Uh, well, the matinee shows did very well. <laughs> <laughs> Big matinee shows. <laughs> the matinee shows? Never so, saw up with people at night, man. They, they were... <laughs> so take us then to legitimately really how you happened. decided to do press. So I did that, and I, was, I did the pilot, and, I was, and I'd been taking acting lessons and stuff because I thought, well, while I was retired, I'd maybe do small movie parts and stuff, and um, I thought that'd be fine. You're taking acting lessons coming off a sitcom that you did for was, 10 years. The Drew Carey Show. <laughs> so yeah, I was taking acting lessons. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, half leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, got a, I got a call from my... I was, we were at a Cracker Barrel somewhere in the Carolinas. <laughs> I go, I left my phone in the car, I tell my, my, uh, my ex, I go, I, I left my phone, I go get my phone and there's a message. I call my agent back and you know, he goes, hey Drew, I got a call from CBS Casting and all of a sudden I thought, oh, maybe they want me to do a CSI or yeah. <laughs> some big drama. Torpedo 2? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Who's pulling the strings now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I go, he goes, what would you think about taking over for Bob Barker on The Price is Right? And I went, what? No. That's exactly how I said it. I go, that old man show? Forget it. <laughs> I thought it was a show that just old people watched, and I was like, no way, I'm doing that. And, uh, While they're doing their ironing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> That's, That's... Spin the wheel! <laughs> That's what I thought. Girl, you see her? <laughs> Three in a row. That was Three a trip dollars to Acapulco. in a row. Three in a row. Or I'm going to call you back. Melvin, <laughs> Melvin's outside waiting for his lunch. 
that's uh, my aunt and my grandma my whole life. <laughs> Except they had a water bottle shaker that they would shake water on the clothes first, and yeah. then they would. Yeah. 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 But anyway, uh, <laughs> I said no. Then I went in into my fiance. She was my fiance. And I go, can you believe these guys? Blah, 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 blah. And then uh, the pilot got picked up. And then I got, was at Bob's Big Boy in Burbank. I got another call from my agent. He goes, CBS Casting called me back. They want still about this Price is Right thing. And I went, well, I should now have a meeting with them because they're working for them now. It'd be the only polite thing to do. Uh, so I said, how much does it pay? He goes, I don't know. I go, what are the hours? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> my agent. And <laughs> All our agents. My no good agent. And so uh, I, I said, well, you know, I'll at least have a meeting with him. So I went and I met with uh, Nina Tassler and the vice president of CBS. Daytime was not there anymore. And uh, another producer is not there anymore. And they all met me at this place on Sunset. My family was in town. And by that time, there was a lot of rumors about who was going to be taking over for Bob in the paper and stuff. My name wasn't included. Because uh, it was not, in the, not known yet. So I met with these guys, and I'd done a little research and found out about it. And by the end of the meeting, I was convinced to do The Price is Right. And Sid uh, convinced me to do the show. He, I, I, he was the, I was pretty sure I was going to do it. And then Sid gave me the question that sold it on me. Um, this guy named Sid Vintage, he was the old producer on the show. And uh, he goes, what do you like to do? I'll never forget, he had a beer in his hand. He goes, what do you like to do most in your life? And I go, I get a lot of joy out of leaving big tips. I really do like leaving a big tip and like coming in and handing 100 to the valet and whatever. And he goes, well, if you're on The Price is Right, you get to do that every day for a living. Uh, yeah. Sid Vintage, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wayne, you have to top that story. Kind of sold it. <laughs> I, money, money, money. Money, money, money. <laughs> No, I said no. Um, um, I said no. But the person that really sold it, I've got to be honest, is is uh, is is I said no of, no a couple times, and uh, I was getting ready to to start a sitcom at another network, and, and I was in 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 negotiations, and Mike Richards, and a couple of the other producers, my buddy uh, Chris Ahern and Graham, they came to Vegas, and no 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 it was at Monty's house. It was at Monty's house. It was yeah. at Monty's house. And first off, to get to meet Monty. That was, that, that was awesome for a kid that, well, when I was making fun lovingly of the lady watching Price is Right, that's my, that's my grandma. That's my grandma, that's the, the woman that I still love to this very day. That was me growing up watching her, wa watching that, and you couldn't talk to her when she watched um, The Price is Right, and then uh, Young and the Restless, and uh, Bold and the Beautiful. Don't talk during Young and the Restless. Oh, Catherine, because my folks are from the Virgin Islands. Catherine on, on screen, Snapper, Snapper, and Greg. So you guys have got to go old school if you know who, who I'm talking about. So, so I grew up watching those, those shows. So even though I had a firm no in mind, I was like, the, much like Drew said, old man shows, how yeah. dare you? I'm not, no, absolutely not. But how could I not say no to uh, say no to meeting Monty and saying, wow, it's so great to meet you and thanks for the entertainment that you gave my mom and I when I was a kid. And he brought us in and it was great meeting Monty and his wife and we talked. But then Mike put it over the top when he said to me, and I don't remember the exact words, but basically, look Wayne, I don't wanna make an old man show either. I'm doing stuff. I want us to make the show that you can do. Take what you do and make it that. And let's make it something that people will watch and the crowd that loves the old version can connect to. But let's just try something completely different. And that was such an amazing thing for a producer to say, because I'm so used to other producers being so full of it, that I looked at this guy and thought, OK, well, I will absolutely try that with you. And let's see what happens. And it took us a second to get rolling. And once it did, we were the little show that could. Because at a certain point, I, you never know if it's going to succeed. So I think I adopted it like in the second season. I went, screw it. You know what? If it gets canceled, at least let's just go out having fun. So I stopped caring about, I'm doing the game show, because I started turning into the thing that I was making fun of, because there were so many rules. Rules for this and the rules, blah, blah, blah. So when we said, all right, let's just play, the world opened up, and the show became so much fun, 
and it's a blast to go into work every day with your family. And just like Drew said, I, I think if you are in entertainment and you're lucky enough to actually get a little bit of money, you do enjoy giving back and being able to share that with, uh, with other people because you know how much a hundred bucks can, can be life changing. It sounds like hyperbole sometimes, but you know when like the old school ATMs when you could get five dollars out at a time? <laughs> I, I used to play the five dollar roulette game when, when I met, <laughs> moved to LA. You're like, money, money, oh, I got five dollars. Oh, the check cleared. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The power of 10. So, so every day when we can give away a car, we give away $1,000, $500 to somebody, $10,000, $50,000 for the super big deal. We change lives, and that means a lot. Yeah, plus, it's not my money. <laughs> That's the log line of the show. Yeah. CBS, it's not my money. It's not my money. <laughs> yeah. I got all the cars you want, but I don't care. I'm the fan. <laughs> yeah. Have a car. That must be nice for you guys. We had a show yeah. once. Uh, <laughs> It, it went, I, I remember, uh, this is like off to the side a little bit, but I remember one time I, I had these uh, Buddhist monks that I know came to the show. Oh, God. And there was like, how many, there was like, there was like five of them, right? Yeah. Five, six Buddhist monks sitting in the Buddhist like, monks came to? Yeah, all in the robes and whatever. And they and were they all. They were friends of yours. They're a friend of mine. Yeah. They, they were all sitting in the, it's like a really big, important monks. And they were sitting in the, like the fifth row back, couldn't miss them. And everybody won everything. Like dollar on the wheel, another dollar on the wheel, 25,000, 10,000. Everybody won except the woman at the very end lost her pricing game because she listened to her friend in the audience. And sandwich. not the monk. Not the monk, yeah. <laughs> she, didn't, she said, oh, it's going to go seven, but my friend said five, and she lost. And every time I go backstage, Mike could be like, these stupid monks. <laughs> <laughs> They're killing us. They're, They're killing us. us. Yeah. The prize budget. <laughs> Them and Snoop Dogg. Remember when Snoop Dogg came for a celebrity? He yeah, killed, he killed he us. He killed us. He's a huge, it turns he's a out, fan and he, he's a huge fan. He knows how to play every game. Us. Yeah. I mean, you know, we got a lot of dope smokers that watch The Price is Right. <laughs> That's by a secret, dope. right? And Snoop, by, and Snoop by, was so high that he didn't know that he won. No. <laughs> and by dope smokers, you mean people who smoke that are dope? So that, cause no, I mean people that sit around and smoke marijuana oh. all day. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently in this case, Snoop wasn't too high because he no. won. He oh, was the was... second highest celebrity earner. Yeah. Who's the one that's the, the first? Oh. No, he was the highest. Oh. He was the, yeah, he was the highest. <laughs> ah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Buck. Right. Drop it. <laughs> Drop the You know, bike. I gotta say, for all the jokes that people make about Snoop getting high all day, he's a high-functioning individual. Yeah. And I'm telling you, he could smoke 10 joints in a row and probably just do math tables all day. Like, you know. Yeah, because that's who I'm gonna go to for my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Would you? Snoop Dizzle. <laughs> Snoop Dizzle, 10 Dizzle, long form Izzle. <laughs> you need a deduct sizzle. <laughs> oh, man. Dan, talk about, you know, a lot of times you don't... <laughs> That's a funny show. That's a really funny idea. Yeah. I'm going to roll up your tax. Don't roll my tax form up, Snoop. <laughs> what are you doing? You need a copy of it. What are you doing? <laughs> wow, wow. Snoop doing your taxes. Oh, so, Dan, shit. you kind of let Wayne, Wayne go. It's, it's, you, you sort of don't know the direction that Wayne's going to go in the episodes. <laughs> talk, talk a little bit about that and sort of, uh, you know, having fun with, with sort of just letting Wayne go the direction that he's going to go. In each well, Mike, Mike and I talk about this a lot because... It's the first time that either one of us actually worked on a show. We hear all the time from buyers, oh, we want to do a show, we want it to be unpredictable. Big lie. No, they want it to be super predictable. But we realized, and Mike realized it first, and, and in that conversation with Wayne, we realized that we had a real chance here to do something that was truly unpredictable. So we had many conversations where we said, don't censor yourself. You mentioned like season two. I think we all got to that place where we went, no, go for it. Swing through the fence all the time. And so much great stuff has come out of that. Um, I know in the, uh, in the little sizzle reel. Of it. Yeah. And I remember we were, we were actually, uh, Wayne was being honored at another award and, and couldn't make it to the Emmys. And, and somebody's texting us going, oh, you just won the Emmy for best original song. Which Cat Gray's in the audience. Yeah. Cat Gray. <laughs> he loves the attention. Everybody stare at him. <laughs> and, and hug him on the way out. <laughs> but, but it truly, this is the first show I've ever done that truly we have no idea what's going to happen. We start rolling tape at the top of the show, and, you know, there's a structure for the number of different games mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But we literally mm -hmm. no, don't know what this man's going to do, which makes it tremendously fun for all of us. 
and has resulted in some incredibly memorable moments, including a song that was made up literally on the spot between Cat and Wayne that won an Emmy. And we're all like, what? Against people who sat and wrote songs. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so, spent enormous amounts of no, time. No, and, and, and in Wayne's defense, he did express regret about that and said, I'm really sorry for all these guys that I know have spent, you know, hardworking musicians that spent months. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> Okay, maybe it's, it's well, only a little sorry. It just means I, their lives I, are a lie. Yeah. Can so. I just say, like, all these professional songwriters, they make up everything on the spot, too, in their home. It's just Wayne's a little better at it. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, know. I, I know Drew was taken aback just now. What was more important than the Emmys that night? Yeah. What did you do that you couldn't be at the Emmys? It was the... Uh, you were being Mondo honored by... by the the Noah was being Caribbean honored by... Heritage. By, yes, by, Caribbean by, Caribbean by Caribbean the Caribbean yes. Heritage uh, Foundation because of my because of my folks being from St. Thomas and St. Croix and being someone of that descent, then I was being honored. So, and he gave a great speech. We were all oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. But none of us were there. So, when the song so yeah. So Ray, Drew. Ray Palantonio, you accepted, he accepted it there. for us. Ray's here, Ray. CBS, there he is, yeah. He goes, we get a text all at the table and I went, you guys just won an Emmy for best original song. And then, and then we were at this very, you know, dramatic, very nice event, and we all started screaming and yelling. And <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Um, of course, Price is Right's no slouch either, having won several Emmys. Did we? Two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, where were you? <laughs> what were you doing that was so <laughs> Cracker Barrel? He was at the Caribbean Heritage <laughs> you, you, you sound like you were with Snoop. Yeah. <laughs> doing your taxes. I would, like, yeah. <laughs> I would love to do my taxes one night with Snoop. <laughs> Believe me. Just to say I did. It would be a week. I want to go back to, uh, we were sort of discussing earlier uh, about you, know, you guys accepting these jobs. And now, of course, you look at, just, it's the coolest job in television to be a game show host. Uh, you look at everyone in prime time, Steve Harvey, Alec Baldwin, everyone wants to be a game show host. What do you guys make of this? I was pretty cool until Alec Baldwin jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got Downer. to say, say, what's cool is, is, is yes, I, I, the, the one thing that I would like to see is it's great that folks are jumping on the bandwagon because we've, we've done the dirty work and shown that just because it's a game show that it doesn't have to be a dirty word. That I would love to see the daytime game show get more respect in that field, even by like the nighttime, the, the, uh, the late night Game sh uh, the late night v variety shows and the talk shows don't necessarily like, yeah, that's great that you show, but, but, but you host that thing. So it would be good for a, at a certain point to really have, have the daytime stuff get that respect uh, that, that, uh, that just like the primetime game show guys now jump on board, that to say that this is just as valid and if not just as funny or if in a lot of cases funnier than what you're doing at night. So. And they only do 10 episodes, and you guys do... We churn them out. Yeah. Quite a few. Yeah. Churn them out. A lot. Yeah, how, how many episodes do you guys do a year? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we do 190 and 175. 190 we do? 190, 175. Wow. Yeah. I'm really, I'm thinking this MRI, Drew. I'm really... <laughs> That's not his thing. He doesn't get, he doesn't really get into that stuff. So, he comes in and a, does it. And... Can I tell you a funny story? This is true because you're talking about the respect and stuff. Mm -hmm. did, ever, did people ever not realize that you're the host of what you do? You know, they ask you, like, what you doing nowadays? And you no. Play. No, you know what they say, which I've given up. They said, oh, Wayne. Wayne, I love you. I lo hey, Wayne. Price is right. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture, baby. Price is right, Wayne. And, and, I, and just to know me, I've got a big ass chip on my shoulder most of the time. I just don't like, it's like, that is not, but I've given up. Oh, yeah, it's, like, it's like, yep, sure is. It's right. <laughs> Say Plinko. And then I get my Tesla and I go home. Back when I was, uh, so yeah, the price is great. Back when I was, uh, back when I was really big, I was with uh, Nicole. We were coming out of the Tao at the Venetian in Vegas. It's like four in the morning, five in the morning, everybody's drunk coming out the of the club. The witching hour. Yeah. And there's a big fountain area right in front of the Venetian by the lobby. So we're by the, we're by the fountain. And a bunch of people go, oh, my God, hey, it's that dude. It's that dude from TV. Hey, man. And I go, hey, how you doing? Can we get a picture? And I go, yeah, sure. There's like 15 of them. So I go to stand in the middle, and they're all getting around me like this, posing for a picture. And the one guy goes, all right, king of queens. <laughs> Oh my God! 
I didn't even start to correct him. <laughs> no. I was like, all right, see you later. Past a certain I, point, the point you can't. That was because, really funny. That's because funny. you also, yeah, like, like Drew's got a great sense of humor about stuff. <laughs> That's just awesome. It's the same you, network, I guess. King of Queens. <laughs> King of Queens. I was, in, uh, I was in Cleveland. You know, I'm from Cleveland. So I'm famously from Cleveland. Yes. Yeah. Like everybody in the world knows I'm from Cleveland, right? And I, I'm, in, I'm in Cleveland at a nightclub. And I'm talking to these two girls, and I'm trying to, you know, flirting with these girls. And uh, they're, what do you do for a living? I don't want to say, because I have such a good time. I don't have my glasses on. And we're just chit-chatting. And uh, they go, what do you do for a living? And I go, uh, I'm in the TV business. And they go, uh, what do you do in the TV business? <laughs> and I go, like the cat's out of the bag, I think. I go, I'm a game show host. And they go, oh, really? What game show? <laughs> and I, I go, the price is right. And uh, the one girl looks at me, she goes, oh, I thought Drew Carey hosted The Prices. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it was after I lost all the weight and everything. And I was wow. like, I actually said, it is he to whom you are speaking. I did. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing to say I'd in a, a nightclub. I had to pull out my ID. I had to pull out my ID and... Uh, no, you went too far. No. Why'd you even bother pulling out your ID? Why you don't do that for, for girls? I no, I don't believe you. Well, let me no, no, no. You just no, no. Uh, Come on, Drew. No, man, you're a, you're Drew Carey. Well, <laughs> not to them. But not you're to Drew. Not, I was gonna say to most of us. To them, I was like nobody. I was like, all right, I'll prove it. Well, Drew brings up a good question. Um, how did you make prices right your own, and when did you sort of feel comfortable like this is my house now? Um, after Mike started, you know, actually, um, cause it was really like, you know, here's the games, play it this way. Here's the patter. It's like I learned a magician's patter. Like when you buy a magic trick, here's how to do the rings, you know, <laughs> here's how to do the foam rabbits. And, uh, I was, I really liked it. And then, uh, after Mike came on board, we got like a new director and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden I was able to just move whatever I wanted to do, go over I want. If I feel, if I felt like walking somewhere else on the stage and, interacting a different way I could, and they were going to be able to cover it. I didn't have to worry about doing a pickup because I stepped out of a, you know, didn't hit the T on the ground. And then I was able to do, be a lot looser than I just do what I wanted. Mike, talk about that, sort of uh, coming in and, and uh, you know, the, the kind of, uh, you know, working relationship you had with Drew at the beginning and, and what, you, what you did to sort of... Well, we met at Bob's Big Boy. Yes. Uh, that was where we had our first meeting. And, Booth uh, in the back on the right-hand side. Yep. And, uh, right before the big round one. Is there a the plaque first... now? There, no, yeah. it should be. <laughs> yeah, sure. and, and it was really, when I was watching it, I felt like he was out there by himself with the contestant, and there wasn't that feeling that it was Drew's prizes, it wasn't Drew's movements, it wasn't his ensemble for him to interact with. Like, he, he is great at bouncing off people, as you all know. And so I felt like he was kind of on an island because Bob was very singular. Um, and, and so we just kind of made everything, both shows are very different, but you have to, I think if you're going to produce a show, you have to produce it around the talent that you have, especially if you have really, really good talent. And then so with, with Price, it was, hey, this needs to be Drew's show where he can laugh and talk to the announcer and the models and Yeah, and I, I, I want to be really careful because I don't want, I'm not trying to bad mouth in any little, I mean, everybody was really good to me and I was having a good time. So it's just that I didn't feel like super, I didn't feel, I felt like I was carrying on a tradition of the old show. And then all of a sudden I felt like it was my show. You know what I mean? So I felt like oh, I'm protecting this show. I got to keep the integrity of the show, keep the flame burning. This is an American institution. I'm responsible. And uh, I got to, you know, I owe all these people that have been working here for so long. And then all of a sudden it was my show and I was like, hey, my show. And uh, that's when I started to feel like that. And we felt like we could fix, like if you went and did something that we, we would protect you. Like you would, right. you, know, you could go, and it's the same thing, you can go off. And it's my favorite moment on the show is when Jonathan Mangum, the announcer, will go, hey, look, a show. Because you've gone, you, you know, there's been nine minutes <laughs> since there's been any semblance of a game show. And we're all crying laughing. We're like, what deal are we doing? You know, and, and so it's that freedom. But you have to produce the show around great talent. That's why you hire great talent. I think the mistake people make, especially in game shows, is that they hire great people and then they say, now do that. And that's what makes them 
not work. Well, it's a tough dance, right? Because I mean, these are like you like you mentioned, these are legacy brands. These are franchises that have been around for for so long, part of TV history. So you want to pay homage to it, but at the same time, you create sort of your own voice and and you know do a show for the new generation. So, uh, and that only works. And and this isn't to to uh, to try to butter you guys up, but <laughs> but just like go on. Mike says <laughs> says it's because of the talent. True, but but conversely, that only works. Just like improv, it only works in a structure that is set up in a great manner. That only works if you've got producers who know the space so well and will protect you, protect the show, make it a wonderful environment. And that's what these two do. I mean, just hands down, really haven't worked with guys better. Yeah, no, me neither. Thanks. Well, that's true. Thank you. Almost when I. When I first started with Mike, we, we would, pra like, not practically, we would legitimately finish, finish each other's sentences when we talked. It's like we were like, that thing where we met that time, we're like, we would know exactly what we were talking about all the time. It was crazy. And I never had, like, a, I hardly ever had a better relationship with a producer. Thanks, man. Sure. <laughs> Mike, Mike and I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to get, go, you go outside. outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See? That's good. See? We got the same thing. Thing. You ain't special. <laughs> so a couple nitty gritty questions about the, the, the games themselves. Uh, first off, uh, Dan, the Zonks, uh, talk a little bit about sort of the, the creation process and, and now you guys solicit ideas from outside as well. But yeah. you know, talk a little bit about how those come about and, you know, the, the creation of them, and of course, Wayne has so much fun with them, sort of, you know, when you bring him in to kind of play with them and, and be a part of the process. We actually try not to. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not, not because he wouldn't be great about it, but we found he's great at, if he doesn't know, his reaction is very genuine. Mm -hmm. If you see the show, if we reveal a zonk and he, does, he literally doesn't know it's coming, he just lights up. Uh, and then he'll run down, he'll leave the contestant, run down and jump <laughs> in. <laughs> I'm we, 13. We just, we just built a, 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 a rocket recliner. Uh, on, oh. We put it on a go-kart chassis. Yeah. So it actually drives. And we reveal this, and I remember looking at his face, he was like, God. <laughs> he runs down, hops in the thing, uh, pulls off. And then there was another zonk. One of my favorite stories is he, he will often invite the person who has gotten zonk because they're not getting a prize to go, come on, I'll give you a ride. So we had this helicopter car, like a little miniature like carnival helicopter. So it goes down there, they jump in, they almost die pulling out of the box, <laughs> around the corner, go across the stage, and you hear, it's the audio, because they pull out of range and you go, no, 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 no! <laughs> and apparently the guy just stomped down on the gas instead of the brake, and they just plowed right into the audio cart. <laughs> but, but it was great, because it was, again, it was just a they, genuine moment. Did they get to keep the zonks? No. 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 Ah. Um, no, but the zonk is the experience. Yeah. Zonk is the experience. And it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, I would want to win a helicopter car. Well, well that's... <laughs> instead yeah. of a trip the only to thing the you ever wanted off the show was the recliner golf cart. Not all of the amazing... The prizes yeah. and stuff like that. It's... And, not that every, every I don't blame video you. Games. Yeah. Which I that got it. Fine. Super yeah, cool. You have it. Yes, yeah. not not the full chassis chair thing, but I did get one of the uh, drift cars yeah. that's inside of it, and I go home. home and I go in the parking garage <laughs> and I do wheelies and <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning. Yep, I'm 13. <laughs> Wait a second. I, you have a parking garage at your house? No, I've got my house, and then where my office is, there's a condo, oh. so I go in the parking garage. I was garage. like, you, I thought you were Batman for a second. <laughs> <laughs> <It'll> be... <laughs> Alfred, prepare the recliner chair. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wayne. Oh! Oh, oh. yeah! It's good. Wayne. It's good. Uh, but, but you guys got to constantly outdo yourselves. <laughs> it's... A... It's it's been an it's been an evolution. Oh. Um, there have been and again in the surprises we uh, we came up with a zonk once it was uh, it was mayonnaise mouthwash. That's a zonk. Yeah. yeah. Well, for some, not for everybody. Again, why and, can't you keep and, and again, and a, a big element <laughs> of the show has become that it has evolved as the cast is Jonathan Mangum and Cat. Cat Gray. Hug him on the way out. <laughs> uh, and Tiffany Coyne, uh, our model. 
who all, they play as an ensemble now. It is, it's almost like a mini sitcom within the show. And, and this popped up and, it's, and, and Wayne goes, go ahead, drink it, I dare you. And there's this beautiful statuesque girl who goes, okay. And he's like, The look what? on his face was like, like, <laughs> she earned all kinds of respect that day. Yeah. So, that sounds like a Jonathan jump on it kind of a thing. Oh, no, Jonathan, oh, no, Jonathan didn't have nothing to do with it. Jonathan's yeah, like, uh, Jonathan to me is a don't dare him. Like, don't ever get into a, anything for a laugh contest with Jonathan. No, but the other day, yeah. we, we were doing Someone's a, doing Jonathan and I were doing a show at the MGM in Detroit, and somebody jumped up on stage and we were doing props together, and, and I said, hey, hey, look, uh, look, it's a straw. And Jonathan grabs the guy's hand, and he looks at me, and, and I look back, and the audience looks at him, and he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Puts this oh stranger from the audience. I just, ooh, his whole hand in his mouth. <laughs> and then went, I'm drinking a soda. Started drinking the guy's hand, and the guy standing there going, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. That's, and be, that wasn't even for TV. And that wasn't uh, for TV. No. I'd be more grossed out if I was the guy from the audience. Yeah. <laughs> He was stoked. Where's that mouth been? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but that's Jonathan. Jonathan will do, I, could, I can't tell you all the stories about Jonathan. No, no you he can't. He does. Nope. When I nope. say anything for a laugh, I mean anything for a laugh. Yep. But what, Sorry, but you were finishing up with Oh, no, 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 it's just the, the zonks have evolved. Uh, we, at first we thought it was, uh, you know, a sort of rudimentary. We thought it was like, oh, the, the purpose of it is it's, it's a bad prize. It's the prize you don't want. But then we realized that there was another, in the same way that the performances evolved, that there was a quality to them that if we made them more fun and more interesting and more interactive, that that just brought, that sort of leveled up the show. So now we spend a lot more time. We, we make fewer, but we put more effort into them so that they're motorized or. Shout out to Jersey, who is our Zong yes. producer. Yes. Hey, Jersey, who actually makes them all. That's a, that's a job in TV, which my kids think is like the greatest job. That they is, make that, Zonk ridiculous producer? things. He's, Zonk he producer. He builds them all. They hand, they hand build them all. Well, I think and Drew's right, though. I think people probably would want to bring them home, but I oh, they they do all, they that's ask a liability issue. Anybody would want to try care. mayonnaise mouthwash? <laughs> well, there yeah, you go. Why not? There you go. Um, well, on the Price is Right side, obviously, so many of the games are legendary, and you know, you've got 75 rotating games. Uh, how do you sort of manage what you rotate in and out? And My question. Drew, go ahead. No. <laughs> but, but because people are, I mean, religious when it comes to these games. It's... Well, we need like long games, short games. Like we have a really long game, like 10 chances or three strikes. Then we have to have a super short game, like you know, double prices or something like that to balance it out. And... It's basically all there is to it. And there's like a grid to like to not repeat things, and then yeah. that one played with a trip last time, so let's make sure it's this. No, that had a. It's like a. It, both shows have like these Rubik's insane cube, yeah. Rubik's cube matrices of how to space things out and air so that you aren't seeing the same prizes or zonks or games or whatever. Yeah, and it doesn't go by just the taping date, but the air date too. Right. So you want to. It's like, the air. It's the air. Yeah. Yeah, it's the air, air date. Or, it's, yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. But you know, when you got 75 to choose from, then it gives you a lot of variety. You just have to, it's, and then you have to think, uh-oh, this is all long games. Yeah. Switch one out. It's not, you know. Yeah, we're eight minutes long before we start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've had that. Yeah. We've had that. Well, we've got uh, time for some Q&A, actually. So, um, I don't, do we have mics, by the way, or are we just going to have people shout out? I can oh, we do people. have oh, there's, mics. Yes. It's flying in. All right. Um, we'll start with you right there, sir. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hi there. Um, without naming names or putting anybody down, I just wondered from the producer's side, what separated the hosts that you picked from the next guy on the list? What? What separated what? What separated the hosts the producers picked from the next guy on the list? What was it that these two had that separated them from anybody else? I don't know who the next else? person on the list was. I'll, I actually do. I, I was... Uh, <laughs> no. It, it was me. Uh, on Price is Right. I oh, Mike, uh, Mike auditioned. I auditioned. Right. Uh, I was one of the five people they host tested. Really? Um, and I just didn't buy me in the role. Uh, <laughs> this was before I was a producer on it, and I was brought in as the, like, the unknown one. Um, and it was me, Mario Lopez. Rosie O'Donnell really wanted to do it. Uh, I always forget the guy. Um, Todd Newton. Todd Newton. Todd Newton. Newton. Who was the guy that... Uh, Stan. Hamilton did it. George Hamilton, that was the one. I saw... I, so... And, and you watch it and you go, it needs to be something totally different. 
I didn't. Um, I didn't. By the way, do they asked me to no, do a. No. They asked me to do a test taping, and I told them no. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, well, if you want, like, if you see my work, if you want to hire me, hire me. If you don't, I'm not gonna do a test taping. I said the same thing. <laughs> um, right after the so, test taping. No, but I think it was really important. I think they made a great decision in that, yeah, after the test taping, I was like, that's it. Um, but it was really important one. to bring someone in that would put their own feel on it and be completely different than, than Barker, because if you bring in someone who is in the vicinity of him and doing the same show, then you're going to get compared to a guy that is uh, you know, legendary. That was, that was Bob's, uh, by the way, that was Bob's pretty much only advice to me was we had lunch after I got picked. I went out with him and uh, Sid Vintage to lunch. And he said, uh, he said, don't try to copy me, just do your own show. Hmm. I don't know if whether it was a threat or advice. <laughs> <laughs> don't try to and copy he, me. And then he asked if they were leather shoes. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, oh. Uh, oh, he did. I liked it. Thank you. He did. Uh, but I think that was really, and you've barely ever watched clips of Bob to, so, to keep that image out of your head so that you wouldn't start doing him doing the show at some point, right? You, I mean, no. I know you've seen some stuff. No, every single game that I had to learn, they showed me a clip of Bob doing it. Oh, they, <laughs> yeah, here's Bob doing it. This is how you do the show. This is how you do the game. And I was like, all right, got it. And then I would go out and practice it. And then go do it. Oh, yeah. I thought you didn't watch it. No, I but, saw every single game with, I saw Bob. And with Wayne, we optioned a half hour format that CBS wanted to be an hour. And we optioned a format that basically had uh, a few deals many, many pricing games that we then couldn't use because we would be on right next to the Price is Right because deals started in 62 and the middle act was often a pricing, a, an exact Price is Right pricing yeah. game. Um, so we couldn't do that. So basically we optioned a half hour format that had a big deal in quickies and nothing else and we were now going to do an hour. And so from the beginning it was like we got it, we got to get, I mean, take this the right way, you got to get a guy that can carry an entire hour of television and do a thing where he can go off for 10 minutes and there's no deal and then bring it back and still you know, make that all happen. Yeah, well, I remember there was a bake-off, right? Uh, it was Deal versus a couple other shows to get on the air. Was, was, was uh, Wayne yeah, already it was, attached to that it was, uh, Yeah, we did a pilot and it was Pyramid, this, and I think a talk show. Can I just also say that uh, Les Moonves was a really big champion of mine. I don't know, I honestly don't know what the machinations were of me getting hired. I mean, that was all out of my hands anyway, so I don't really, I mean, I really, if, it's, if I can, I'm not in control of it, I don't worry about it. Um, but I know Les Moonves was president of Warner Brothers Television when the Drew Carey Show got picked up for the first time, and he always liked me from there. Then he got moved from CBS after that. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, he's always liked me, so. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know if he had anything to do with it, because I was literally like off everybody's radar, retired, and the only reason they thought of me is because I did that pilot which was a CBS show and that, that one time in New York. Otherwise, they would have never picked me. Well, the other interesting thing, uh, and I remember at the time, Mike, uh, that, that you were in the running for, for the host gig, and I always thought it was fascinating that, okay, you didn't end up as host, you ended up as producer, which generally doesn't happen when, when someone doesn't get a hosting gig. That's why I never call in sick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It only takes one. Break the glass, it's time. <laughs> All right, more, more questions. Uh, here in the front, um, who's got the mic to pass it to him? Oh, thank you. I can hear you. You can go ahead. Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm live. Um, um, it's more of a comment to you. I'm just, I want to say that I'm happy and, and glad that you guys got to finish out the Drew Carey show. You really deserved it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Thanks for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I like right your there? tag, by the way, is the Dice Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right over here. I was uh, really quickly for Dan Funk. Do people send in Zonk ideas? I know sometimes in the office you guys have, hey, send in your Zonk ideas. Oh, by the thousands. Really? Yeah. Do you pick it's, any of them? Yeah, we use quite a few. We, I would say probably about 25, 30% of them that you see are actually submitted by people. It's great because there's such a wide variety of them. What are some of the ones that people have submitted? Um, you know. That one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we do say uh, donkey, say, donkey say, dishwasher. I believe was what? there was a donkey dishwasher. Donkey yeah, dishwasher yeah, was call. a was a. And then uh, we give them a shout out at when we use their zonk. Then yeah. we give them a shout out. This zonk was submitted to us by 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 such and such and submitted so zonks to us. Spin an animal, spin an appliance, match yeah. them up, <laughs> make a zonk. Yeah. <laughs> those little, those, those things. It's like the Flintstones. Monkey hair dryer. <laughs> it's, like the Flintstones. <laughs> it's a living. It's a living. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> Donkey looks up. It's Question over here. Yeah, so 
each year the, the, the prizes get bigger, the cash gets bigger. I'm fascinated by the budget element of it. How hard is it to control the budget over 190 episodes and be able to offer the big prizes all year long? It's, it's incredible. It's really incredible the work you guys do. Did you ever see a game on the show called uh, uh, That's Too Much? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little tough. Oh, whenever, that's a really hard game to win, yeah. and hardly anybody ever wins that game. And when I'm doing a taping week, and I notice we're playing a lot of that's too much, I think to myself, oh, we've been giving away too much. <laughs> <laughs> Gave way too much time to rein it in. Trying to save some money playing that's too much. So we'll yeah, show a car, and then we'll like, hey, they didn't win the car, but we showed it. Hey. <laughs> That's like the killer. That's my key game that I look for, man. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Uh, no, that's true. No, um, no, I mean, it's a thing. We manage it on both shows. And, you know, we have a number that we're trying to hit for the season. And it's our job to make sure that people are winning a lot because that's what's a lot more fun to, to watch, of course. But if everyone wins, it's actually not interesting either. There's a lot of testing that you do. If it's just, if it seems too easy, then you could, you could give away a million dollars and people wouldn't really care because they didn't try for it. So... You're, you're yeah. co constantly read a lot of, it. Read a lot of game theory books since yeah. I got this show. <laughs> but it's a, and it's a thing. I mean, we, and it is an ongoing, I mean, I, you know, I know Dan, and I know where the prize budget is after every episode, at every time, and I mean, I'm doing it. When, uh, do you remember when Manuela gave away the car accidentally on the prices, yeah. right? Uh, Manuela, I got to be really good friends with her. She legit thought she was going to get fired right there on the spot. And she was like trying not to cry, hiding behind the thing. Yeah. And uh, we told her, like, right away, I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Uh, and then Mike, we were like, hey, we're going to give away a car anyway. We want to give away cars. So, so what? We gave away a car, and we got 5 million hits on YouTube at the same time. 18 million. 18 yeah. million. <laughs> well, like the first weekend. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So, relax. You did a great thing, you know. Don't yeah. do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Ever, <laughs> but you know, that was nice serendipity. But we're gonna go like we want to give stuff away. Yeah, you know? so. yeah. People think that we don't, and that's the funny. They're like, "Oh, you," and it's like, "No, we." That's why we're there. But we want you to earn it because, again, that is more satisfying if you're watching it at home as opposed to you just got it. Yeah, you wouldn't want to give away. You wouldn't watch a show where it's just like, "Here you go, here you go," and nobody was trying. That's part. Welcome of that. to everybody's a winner. Yeah, <laughs> here's your prize. No. <laughs> yeah, that is part of like game theory psychology. You want to make it hard enough to think you, you want to, you want to, when you're watching the show you want to some people want, you're watching it it's like a Jungian you know Joseph Campbell thing you want to watch an average person overcome an obstacle but if they have no obstacle to overcome eh, who cares you know so you want to see them try, like overcome and triumph you know so you have to have some kind of game that they have to work at a little bit you know at the same time, it's a TV show, so you also have to make sure that it's entertaining, but also people can understand what the game is. Yeah, and, and TV show-wise, a uh, close loss is just as good as TV is a big win. You know, like, you, oh, they almost got the thing. You know, that's, ex that's exciting, too. And it's a great thing about both shows is that if there is a tough loss, which obviously there is a lot of, there's also, right around the corner, a great win, because there's another game. Mm -hmm. It's the brilliance of both formats is that there's... Both shows have more wins per minute than any show on television. We had a guy on the showcase round that would have the prize was a Porsche Boxster, and uh, you guys gave away a Porsche. A Boxster, yeah. Uh, this is we gave, we gave, <laughs> we, no, no, we gave we away gave, one. We gave we gave one away because um, somebody hit it with a forklift. I remember that. Did we? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. But uh, the the did price, we ever have Snoop on? <laughs> I would love to see Snoop on. Let's make a deal. Let's make a dizzle. Let's yeah. make it. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Go oh, on. no. The guy bid, uh, the, it was like, he bid like 55500 He threw in 500 bucks. Oh. And uh, yeah. wasn't it 55 yeah, or, 50, or something. And, and yeah. uh, the, the actual retail price was $55,350. So he was over like by $150. So when I pulled the card out, I was like, uh, <laughs> hey, why don't we just go to commercial? I'll tell this guy privately <laughs> what happened over lunch. Hey, just come to lunch with me. I'll tell you the answer. <laughs> Is the cereal okay? You're over by $150. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, I, I think he just like, like, he like sat down, like he's the only one ever just like sit down and just hold his head in his hands yeah. after losing like that. I don't know why he threw in that 500 bucks, man. 
Um, going back to a minute ago when we were talking about kind of, you know, the spirit of giving, and I love what you were saying, Wayne, about, you know, coming from a background where you know that that 200 or that 1,000 can really change someone's life and that most people in this room are probably here because we understand, you know, the power of television. So my question is, has doing this show, you know, shifted your focus with your career and understanding the responsibility that is in broadcast television, you know, whether it's behind the scenes or how you choose projects, just in that spirit of giving and kind of using television to change people's lives? Mm, no. <laughs> Come on, you knew what was coming. <laughs> Hanging curveball. Come on. Um, 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 I can't speak for Drew, but for myself, <laughs> so if I love that question, and the answer is yes. I think more so, even as a, um, as a, uh, and not to get on my high horse, but but as a, as a man of color. In a, in, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> in a in a job that 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 until a a while ago was didn't have a lot of me in it. Um, now I know that there's so, that that in show business it's not just now an aspirational thing for some kid at home to say, oh, I want to be a baseball player, a football player, oh, I want to be an actor, I want to be this. It's like some kid home from school really could watch me do, let's make a deal and go, oh, I want to do something like that. And that's, that's in my own life made me more aware of the things that I choose to do. I do a lot more kids programming for, for Disney and Nickelodeon and, and, uh, and I do a lot with kids and mental health um, because they, use this as a platform. And when I was younger, I wasn't thinking about that because it was just a great job. Now it's a way of give, giving back. And so I'm keenly aware of that be, because of this show. Sir? Oh, um, I, th I, you know, when I first started taking over The Price is Right, I thought, well, this is an American, it really <clears throat> seems to me to be an American institution, even though it, it didn't start till 1972. Uh, I, was, I was already in junior high and in college when it, I was in college when it started getting like super popular, but it's been around for so long, and uh, I really think I have a big responsibility to not for the people that work there. Like I'm more concerned that I don't want to let them down because like St I'm looking at Stan over here. <laughs> this is the guy. Stan over here is the guy that picks the audience contestants who get the. <laughs> Thirty-seven years. Yeah. He's worked there thirty-seven years. How many contestants do you interview? Fifteen thousand two hundred contestants per season. Per season, uh, he yeah. interviews. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think like you know, there's people that have been there for years and years and years, and people that have just started that are probably going to be there for years. And years. It's not a show with a really high turnover, because you know, it's a show that's always going to be. That's a dream job, getting a job on a, a show like this. It's going to be around, or hopefully. And I feel like, man, you got a really big responsibility to not. To make sure these people can pay their mortgages and buy a house and mm. you know get a car and everything. And there's like you know, a couple hundred people like depending on me to pay bills. So I have a, like a, as much responsibility for them than I do the audience or anything else. You know. Right on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stan drives a Mercedes. That's all I know. <laughs> well, guys, this has been. A lot of fun. Thank you so much, Mike, Dan, Drew, and Wayne. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Give it up for Mike. <laughs>